So here we're going to talk about how a character table can be used to represent the properties of a group. The mathematical tool that we can use to, to represent symmetry is called group theory. And group theory uses a lot of matrix math as the representation of those symmetry properties. So here's the language that we're using to describe symmetry. The properties of a group can be used, you know, used in, in group theory with the matrices can be represented by a character table. Each point group has its own character table. So here is the character table for C2H, the point group of the uh, trans dichloroethylene molecule we were looking at previously. So you um, have available to you character tables that I'll, I'll print for you and also that you can find as a PDF on Moodle. And it should be noted that character tables are not the kind of thing that we commit to memory. Instead, they're a resource that we consult, kind of like the periodic table itself. And so character tables look something like this. Um, what's going to follow here is a little tour of some of the features of our character table. So an important feature of our character table is what's called the order of the point group. And so the order here is going to equal the total number of symmetry operations in a point group. Um, in this case, because each of the coefficients on these symmetry operations is one, we have a total of one, two, three, four uh, operations in this point group. So the order here is going to be four. This is gonna be the same as the sum of squares of the dimensions. Now the dimensions are the numbers in the first column, the E column. And so you see that they're all ones because everything is symmetric with respect to the identity operation. So we could calculate the order using the dimensions. It would be one squared plus one squared plus one squared plus one squared equals four. The classes are the number of columns in our um, character table. And so here there are four classes that represent the sort of different operations. Now in other point groups we might have for example two different C2 operations. So there would be two C2 operations but only one C2 class. The irreducible representations are the rows in our um, character table. And they have these, these letters that they're known by. So there are four irreducible representations in the C2H point group. Um, so they're AG, BG, AU, and BU. And those represent um, symmetries. So each, we, we can think of a, an irreducible representation as explaining how something is affected by each of the operations in our point group. So for example, in the BG um, irreducible representation, we see that there are ones and negative ones. So BG is symmetric with respect to identity because everything is symmetric with respect to identity. Not symmetric with respect to C2, negative one. Respect symmetric with respect to uh, inversion and not symmetric with respect to the sigma H. We'll talk more about what those have to do with molecules in a minute, um, but the point is that the that information, one, negative one, one, negative one, is encapsulated by the label BG. Okay, so what is the order of this point group, TD, the tetrahedral point group? We can find the order of the tetrahedral point group by adding up the total number of operations. So here the order will equal 1E plus 8C3s plus 3C2s plus 6S4s plus 6 sigma Ds for a total order of 24. We could also have gotten that by squaring, by, by, by summing the squares of the dimensions, the numbers in the first column. So in this case, we would have gotten that the order is equal to one squared plus one squared plus two squared 
plus 3 squared plus 3 squared, which should also equal 24. Okay, so again, we've worked through our um, the kind of parts of this character table. Some other observations about character tables. They're all square matrices. The number of irreducible representations, the rows, equals the number of classes, the columns. Those irreducible representations are also orthogonal, which means that they don't overlap with each other. They are distinct entities. And so mathematically, we can show that by trying to multiply them by each other. So for example, if we were to multiply AG times BG, then we would have 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1 equals 0. And you can do that for any combination of two irreducible representations. The irreducible representations are the simplest representations, the simplest symbols for the symmetry of a, an, an object or a rotation or whatever in this point group. And so they represent kind of distinct spaces. Um, all groups also have what's called a totally symmetric representation, a representation that is symmetric with respect to all operations. You can find the totally symmetric representation by looking for the row, the representation, with all ones. So in this point group, the totally symmetric representation is AG because we see that every number with um, so every number in that irreducible representation uh, is a 1, meaning symmetric with respect to. Every point group has one of those. It's usually the first one, but its label, AG, might be different from different point groups. Um, if we look over to the right side of the character table, we'll also see some letters over there, X, Ys, and Zs. Um, these represent the symmetries of mathematical functions within a group. So, um, for example, the X, Y, and Z would represent um, something like the function of X equals X. And we could think about how that function would be different if we rotated it around the z-axis, for example. Um, we have both x, y, and z. We have rx, ry, and rz, which represent rotations. And then we have these quadratic functions, x squared, y squared, z squared, x, y, x, z, x, y, z. And so those functions have different symmetries in different point groups. We can give those mathematical functions physical meanings that relate to chemistry. So, for example, um, translational motion has the same symmetry as x, y, or z. So, translational motion in the x direction has the same symmetry as f of x equals x. Rotational motion has the same symmetry as x, y, and z. We'll talk more about vibrational motion next time. It depends on the selection rules of the spectroscopy in question. Those to think about which orbitals can overlap to make a bond. Those irreducible representations have these labels, A, G, B, G, A, U, so on and so forth, and those actually mean something. Um, so here's a table showing those, um, the meaning of those different symbols. And so, for example, A's are all symmetric with respect to the principal rotation axis. And so you can see 